Hello, everyone. Um, I welcome you to session number 11 for this PS4 um, <laughs> learning. Okay. Today, we are going to look uh, into the uh, different progression that is that are pertaining to online uh, RG on 2GW, specifically what we call the GY interface. Okay. The objective of this training session is to describe the principles and function of online charging and be acquainted with the configuration command for online charging. Okay, so first we're going to look into the basic concept, basically a revision of the basic concepts. So here you can see that uh, this is the GY interface. So your PDN gateway, your P gateway, basically PDN packet data network gateway connects to your OCS via GY interface. So in the architecture, this is where OCS is located, and this is uh, the interface that we're going to look into. Okay, so what is an online charging? Okay, there are two types of charging. One is online charging, one is offline charging. So online charging requires a subscriber to purchase volume time quotas in advance. The thing that we need to uh, note here is that it, this is a request in advance of the service use, and it does the use quota in real time. So you request the quotas in advance, and then you use that quota, and then the information of the use quota is then shared with the online charging system. So the online charging station enables the system to monitor the quota usage and deduct the use quota from account balance in real time. So you request it in advance, you use it in real time, and once it is about to be uh, exhausted, you request for more quota. Uh, coming back to this, Service flows. Okay, so once your your session or your PDP gets activated, this is how it works. So your PGW applies for the service quota from OCS. OCS checks internally whether the quota is available, the request is directly available, and then it issues the service quota. Once the service quota is issued, the user is allowed to communicate with the PDM gateway and perform the required browsing. Then based on the specific time or the specific volume. Your uh, quota usage is basically reported to the OCS, and then you apply for a new quota. And if that quota is available with OCS, the OCS is going to issue a new service quota. And this process keeps on repeating mm -hmm. until your service is deactivated. Once your service gets deactivated, then comes a part of your offline charging. So PGW is basically maintaining the usage information, maintaining it for real-time reporting to OCS and also maintaining for offline reporting, which are basically accumulated in the CDR. And then your CDR is sent to the charging gateway. Yes, uh, during your service uh, service usage, CDR are also created, but those are called partial CDR. So this step number five is basically referring to the completion of the CDR. And then it repeats again and again, okay? So this is basically the mechanism of how your online charging works. Uh, a little bit of insight to GIVA interface. So you have your L1, L2, IP, TCP, then you have your diameter-based protocol, and on top of that, you have your diameter current control application. So this same diameter, uh, same protocol um, is uh, stack is being used on BGS and as well as on OCS. So at the application layer is where the communication takes place. Right. So diameter online charging provides different functionalities. The first one is your prepaid services. Second one is automatic uh, redirection service. I mean, if your quota is exhausted or if there is any uh, redirection that is required, that is provided. And then you have your active and standby OCS service as well. So that if one OCS server goes down, you have the uh, capability of uh, shifting your service to the available OCS. Okay, so this is the pro. You create a service request, you get a service response, then uh, your communication with PCRF. After PCRF, you send uh, the user send the packet to service, but UGW needs to check whether the quota is available. So it sends the CCR initial request. Initial request is sent to the OCS with the specific rule that you are requesting, which rule consists of your rating group the service ID that is to be subscribed. And the OCS said that, okay, according to this rating group, I have some quota available. And it is going to then confirm by that, okay, yes, you can allow the usage of this mm -hmm. service, okay? And once your communication is done and the initial quota is exhausted, then user sends an update service request where it mentions that, okay, I have consumed this much of the quota 
and I request and I'm requesting from four quota. So OCA then checks that okay, the quota is available, then uh, OCA sends back um, with the refreshed quota, which is then saved in the UGW. Actually, what happens is that in the in your CCR initial, the quota communication does not take place. The initial, um, if you go, if you look into the traces deeply, your CCR I is basically to check with OCS that whether this user is subscribed in OCS, it is provisioned in OCS, and it has uh, proper provisioning for data services available. So this CCR CCA initial is actually not going to give you any quota. It is just going to give you diameter success indicating GGS and that okay the user is allowed for data services from OCS. Once the user starts browsing, for example, you want you want to use WhatsApp, then the UGW is going to send an update request where it will specifically mention that okay for WhatsApp maybe your your system is using RG17 or RG18. So it's going to send an update request that okay I need a request for rating group 18. Then OCS is going to check then it's quota that okay for rating group 18 for this user how much quota is available and then it is going to assign some specific quota that is predefined so your initial communication usually does not in involve for quota it is basically to check whether the service is allowed and once for quota assignment and quota update that is done in your update request so initial update request will request for quota initial update service one is going to send a quota then the subsequent update request will will request for updated quota and inform about the quota you use it so service number two for update may be to update the used quota and uh, require for more quota or it may be that maybe you're using now a different service you're using youtube so maybe youtube has a different rating group so in that case service two will be ccr update request and you're going to mention that okay for rg 28 is youtube so i need quota for 28 so ocs is going to check that okay a quota for rating group 28 is available with me and then it is going to send back to the cca update uh, uh, response message that it is going to assign the specific quota for rg28 and subsequent communications where update can be for a new request and update can be for the existing request quota updates and once your session is deleted then you send a final termination request where you will mention that okay how much from the previous year signed quota how much quota has been used so that only that much deduction is done from OCS. For example, in the last update request, OCS assigned you 125 Mbps, but in delete session request, only 50 MB has been used. So you're not going to be charged for whole of 125 in the termination request. And the UW will inform that, okay, only 50 MB was consumed. So from here, the 125 that were reserve, only 50 is going to be deducted. The rest of the 75 is going to be added back into the user quota to be used, to be used after. And once you see your termination answer is respond, uh, your response is received, you're going to send a delete session response. Now let's look into the data configuration. Okay, so first we're going to look into the basic interfaces and, and the interworking. Right, so this is how the, the connectivity with G, GGSN does it. Also. So you have a GGSN and you have multiple OCS servers. Okay, so with both, each OCS server, the GGSN has a separate link. So link one with OCS one, link two with OCS two, link three with OCS three, and link four with OCS four. Further, you have an option to merge multiple OCS into an OCS group. So when you look into the configuration, you're gonna see that you merge the multiple OCS that are added in OCS group, and the GGSN communicates with the OCS group. So based on OCS group, uh, whichever OCS is available and that has, uh, uh, I mean, based on those OCSs whose IP is selected in the link, uh, your request goes to that OCS. And this group is usually done region-based. For example, if you have four regions in your country, so you're going to merge all the OCS in one group into one OCS group. Plus, this concept of OCS group can be used that, okay, you can use these two OCSs to serve one APN and maybe some different OCSs to serve a different APN. So the concept of OCS group comes over there as well. And the configuration procedure is like this. First, you configure the GGS and then you configure the OCS information, then you configure the links between the local and parent, and then you configure the OCS group, okay? So the first thing is to add the diameter local information, okay? 
the diameter local information is basically the diameter related configuration on the GPSM that is going to be used for communication with your uh, OCS. So it includes your host name, your real name, and the product name. So host name can be anything that you need to mention. Real name is something that is configured that is basically agreed upon with the OCS and yourself. And then you have a, a product name. Next one is basically uh, the OCS information that is configured. So you add an OCS and you mention that the OCS name, you mention the real name and you mention the VPN instance. Okay, so you want to add two OCSs, you add two different OCSs, the VPN instance is usually the same on this open instance is where your communication takes place. Next is to add the IP address of the OCS server. So I add diameter peer address, the first OCS will have a different IP address. The second one obviously is going to have a different IP address. So you're going to add multiple OCS services. Uh, if you have multiple OCS servers, you're going to add multiple IP addresses. Okay. And uh, let me just 